Today, we're going to talk heaters, heaters, controllers, and preventing tank disasters. <sighs> What's going up, guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now, today, I wanted to dig a little bit into heaters and heaters, controllers, a little bit of safety around that. Now, a heater dying or getting stuck on is one of the main things that can crash a tank, and this happens quite a bit, um, enough that it's the most common cause. There's a few things you can do to kind of help prevent this and provide those extra levels of redundancy and safety to your system. Number one, uh, I always like to tell people to use two heaters rather than one. Um, now, you don't want to use two massive ones. If your tank needs, say, a 300 watt heater, uh, what you do is you get two 150 watt heaters instead. That way, if one of them happens to get stuck on, it doesn't have enough power to cook your tank. Now, if one of them fails, you still have the other heater that can kind of limp your tank along and it's not going to get too cold. So that right there already provides like your first level of redundancy. Um, now, the next step up from that would be using some kind of a controller on your tank to take it up to another level and do work as like kind of a backup to your heater. So if for something happened, your heaters got stuck on, um, that controller would be able to physically cut power to those heaters and turn them off so your tank didn't get cooked. Now on the flip side of that, if you know your heaters were to die, you know, someone can send you alerts and whatnot. So ideally you'd have something, you know, like an Apex, an E-Coral, GHL, some kind of controller that will send you alerts and do all this stuff. But I know not everyone wants to spend $500 on a tank controller and that's completely understandable. Uh, one of the most common things I get is people don't want to spend, you know, how do I do this without spending a fortune? So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And one of the new kind of products I picked up that I feel like it'd be a good one to touch base on today is the Inkbird controllers. Um, so take a look at this one. This is one of the newest models, and this one is the ITC306T-A. Now Inkbird does have a ton of different models out. Um, this one, a couple of things that stand out about it to me. Uh, if you are going to buy one, get one that has the plastic temperature probes. There are some that have metal ones. Now, metal and salt water is always best to be avoided, so get the ones that are plastic coated and it's going to do a lot better for you. Uh, this one also has two heater outputs, so we can plug in our dual heaters, right? So that's step one, and step two will be having a controller on top of them. Now, if you live somewhere in kind of a hotter climate, there also is models that have a heating and a cooling plug. So you can say have it turn on a fan and then you could just use like a splitter or another little power bar after that to plug into a heater. So there's still ways around that. Um, now, this one is one of their newest models and a couple, one cool thing is it does have dual heater probes. So it's another level of redundancy. If you haven't noticed yet, all about the redundancy, right? Back up your backups. So to plug this guy in. I've already been playing with it. So, you know, a little bit of unboxing, had your box, had your controller inside instructions and a little warranty card now another really cool thing about this guy is it's one of the first models that have an app integration so you can add it to an app and control it remotely you can get alerts to some things out of whack with it now just how to set this up if you don't have the app uh, come in and you can use celsius or fahrenheit so you can take your pick hold down the set button for two or three seconds and right now we see ts1 so that's your temperature set one so that's your low value. So if I want a low of 25 degrees, now I'll hit set again. Now we got TS2, so that's your high level. So it goes within about half a degree. So I believe it will let me go down to about 25.5. Uh, alarm high. So if you go above a certain temperature, it can set an alarm. Now I was playing with this last night in the room and it did get pretty hot and it did actually set off the alarm. I could hear it from across the house. So it was pretty loud alarm as well as it popping up on my phone. So that's a really cool feature. So you can set your high and you can also set a low. So if your temperature goes too low, that could be alert you like say a heater dies, you know, to go look at it, right? So it's really cool that has these alerts built in. So we'll set that. And then CT, this is the continuous time. So this is another kind of alarm. So if it's running for you know, if you know it heats up your tank within an hour, you can say set this to three hours. So if it has the heater outlet on for more than three hours and it hasn't reached temperature yet, it's going to send your alarm. That could be letting you something like maybe your heater died and you have to go look at it, right? So there's a lot of cool really safety features built in. Um, this is for CA for your calibration. So if you test it, you know, your tank tests at 78 and you have a NIST validated thermometer and maybe it's 78.5, you can come in here and you can adjust the up or down variance to calibrate it, which is cool. It's always good to be able to calibrate stuff. Um, now this one's Celsius or Fahrenheit, so you can change between that. I know many of you guys use Fahrenheit. And to save it, you hold down that button for two or three seconds, saves all your settings. 
Now, the one cool feature that makes this one shine over the rest is the fact that you can use it with an app. I'm gonna open up the Inkbird app. Now, I've already paired this one. Um, if you wanna pair it, you hold down the Wi-Fi button for two or three seconds, and there's a little light right there that will start blinking rapidly. When it's blinking rapidly, it's in pairing mode. Um, you can hit the little plus sign on the top and add it through the app. Now, once the app is open, we can see what the temperature is currently on the meter. Um, you do have the ability to turn it on and off, which is kind of cool. Maybe if you even wanted to clean your heaters or do maintenance, you don't even have to, you know, unplug it. But there also is a power button there, so it basically does the same thing. Uh, the other kind of thing is, so we can set our temperature one, so our lower and our high, right through the app. If we go into the settings, um, same thing, so Fahrenheit, temperature calibration, and you can set your low and your high values. Now, the one thing I notice in the app is it doesn't necessarily pull the one that was on the unit. I think it does more of a push to send it to it. So it may be some kind of oddball numbers when you first open it. So open the app. If you're setting it up, you're going to use it. Set your parameters and save it. And it will be the same on the app as it is on the unit. Um, so, you know, say set an alarm for more than three hours. Uh, low temperature value, we'll just say, say 76. So 76, 78, hit back. And you can see APP, just sent the program into it. Um, so when the alarm did go off last night, when I was playing with it just with the room temperature and the heater, um, I did get a, physically did do an alarm sound from across the house. So I did hear that, it was very loud, noticeable. And I also did get the pop-up notifications on my phone. So that was pretty cool. You're out of town, you can check on your tank, make sure everything's running well. Uh, now, the main reason I kind of want to highlight this is because people always say, you know, what's a cheap way? What's the budget way to do it? These things are 30 to, I think in the States, they're 35, 40 bucks. In Canada, you know, they're 45, 50 bucks. So it's very inexpensive for what you get for a heater controller. So I really do think it goes kind of a long way of preventing disasters in your tank. And it is very cheap insurance, you know, the price of a frag or two, you're protecting your whole system. So, I don't know, I've used other models this one in the past. I haven't put this one on the tank yet because this is a brand new one. Um, I'm going to be throwing this on one of my new systems. So I figure I'd give you guys kind of a quick peek and a little bit of unboxing, how to set it up. And yeah, it's going to go a long ways, especially for those frag tanks, you know, or if you have a temporary quarantine system, anything, you should always be using a heater controller. One of the biggest things you could do to help save your tank. So guys, if you're not going to buy a controller, that is fine, but I do still recommend a heater controller. And at the very least, use those two half size heaters because that's going to go a long way for preventing a disaster in your tank and keep you one of those long term successful reefers. All right, guys, now as always, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next video.